let's go ahead and put the case together so that we can start putting the internals and the overdrive unit on. Here we have our front servo or intermediate servo. This is an aftermarket one, so it does have two rings. They do make new ceiling ring kits for an aftermarket servo like this. If you're taking one apart, you just got to remember that you're not going to have all of the ceiling rings in your average kit for this particular servo. This servo has a solid Teflon ring, an O-ring, and, and then two scarf cut Teflon rings at the bottom. Lube up the piston bore, lube up the servo. Then we have our rear servo. Do need to replace this lip seal. Rear servo goes with the lip seal facing down. Let's install our return springs. Then we have our front servo guide. It does have a steel ring on it. In order to install the front servo guide, I do use a, a clamp and a large socket. It can get a little tedious if you're not careful. And now we can install our snap ring. Then we can air check our intermediate servo. Our rear servo spring retainer. This lip is going to face down. Our snap ring. Then we can air test our rear servo. With the case flipped over, we can set our overdrive piston housing to case gasket in place. A couple of guide bolts don't hurt. then our overdrive piston retainer and our six bolts. Then we can torque our bolts to 13 foot pounds. And we can flip the case over. Now we can install our rear sprag. Lube the rear sprag. 
before we install the low reverse drum, the rear band does need to be in place. These two tabs are going to face the side of the case. The solo one will face the servo. If this guide pin has been removed, make sure that it is reinstalled at this point. Now we can go ahead and put the rear drum in place. Make sure that you have it lubed. Once the rear drum is in place, we want to make sure that the sprag is working properly. The low reverse drum should freewheel in a clockwise motion and should lock in a counterclockwise. Then we can install our thrust washer and our snap ring. Now, at this point, there's two different ways that I see to do this. The gear train can get set in. You can put the direct forward in the pump in and assemble the front of the unit. Or we can flip this case upside down and put all of the overdrive components on. Uh, the reason that some guys don't like to put the overdrive on and then do the gear train is because you you do run the risk of having a misalignment and having a gear train problem. However, I find it easier to do it the way that I'm going to show you guys in the upcoming video. Because we still have to deal with end play, we don't know where that, that stuff is at. A rear drive Chrysler, you cannot check end play without the overdrive assembly on the transmission. And that's why I do it in the manner that I do rather than put the gear train in, build the front of the transmission, and then put the overdrive stuff on. But I will show you guys that as we move along. Thank you very much. Now with the case turned over, we can go ahead and put new seals on our overdrive piston. The lip should be facing down, this side here. And we can install our piston. We want to orientate this so that these two posts fit in these two slots here. Now we can place our spacer ring in place. And our gasket. Place our guides. And then over here on our overdrive assembly, we already have the bearing pasted in place. I'm simply going to remove the alignment shaft that we had in place earlier. And now we can go ahead and set our overdrive assembly on the main case. Yes, it is a little bit messy, and then we can install our bolts. We can torque our bolts to 25 foot-pounds. The two bolts on the bottom of the overdrive case, I generally tighten up by hand. And now we can go ahead and flip the case over and put the main case components together.